Now, Dave, I always love when the media has to deal with reality and the latest polls are not great for Biden and they don't like it. You're not going to believe this, Paul, but a certain amount of people in America through watching things via videotape and on the Internet are starting to realize that something is wrong with Joe Biden. I mean, look, it's been obvious to all of us. It was obvious to most of us well before he was elected to be president of the United States. But the longer the, the farce goes on, the longer this charade where, you know, he can't read properly off the prompter, he wanders off into the greenery, all of the rest of it, more and more people, if nothing else, if not the policies, which are pretty bad, and Bidenomics and the border that's open and all of that stuff, enough people are realizing, oh, maybe we shouldn't have this 80-year-old plus guy who's confused about names and what his son is doing for a living and everything else as president. But, uh, you know, never never overestimate the ability for people to vote the wrong way. So I am I am not counting anything just yet. As you know, one of the famous lines of the Christopher Nolan version of Batman is that it's always darkest before the dawn. And when you're charged with a lot of crimes and they've got a mugshot of you, that's a pretty dark time. But it seems to be working for Donald Trump. Is dawn on its way for Donald Trump? It's really something else, isn't it? You know, having been off the grid for a couple of weeks, I, I missed the, uh, the Georgia indictment, but it does not seem to affect any of his, at least, the, at least the ardent base support for him. It's a little unclear what's happening to me with the person who maybe is on the fence, but if we're to believe what the polls are, he, he's crushing it right now. Uh, as you know, there's another guy who's here in Florida that I like, Ron DeSantis, and I believe that this is a long race, and you know, the first primary, the Iowa uh, primary, is not until January, so we, in essence, we have about five months to get there. Uh, but I think what one of the things that the machine is struggling with right now is I think that they expected that if they got Trump hung up in five different cases in all of these different states, you know, you got New York, you got Georgia, you got the federal case, et cetera, et cetera, that somehow people would be walking away. And we're, we're just not seeing evidence of that. Now, again, when you get to the ballot box, maybe people's feelings will be different. But right now, the, the support just seems to not be moving or not leaving it. Obviously key to the matchup and the rematch in 24 of 2020 is the assumption for Republicans is that some people will have changed their mind, the hate might have fallen off a little bit, but is your expectation that if it is the rematch, and as you say, all the polls seem to point that way regardless of whether there are better candidates around and ones that perform differently and better in different states, not a small point, but is your sense of America that America has hardened in its hate for Trump and that makes it harder for him to break what happened in 2020? Or is it the plummeting nature of Biden that means enough people stay away for Trump to repeat what he did in 2020, but Biden can't repeat what he did in 2020? No, it's the former. It's the first one, because I think what's happening here is, look, a certain set of people hate Trump no matter what, right? That's why the phrase Trump derangement syndrome, TDS, took off. Now you're going to have another set of people that right, rightly or wrongly will see all these indictments and God only knows where we'll be at in the, in the 14 months from now when the general election is, again, if he becomes the nominee, who will think that whether it's legit or not, if there are indictments that are sitting around there, they're going to think something's there. Again, right or wrong. So that's going to push a certain set of people away. Uh, the simple truth is that we know that the negatives on Trump are extremely high. So I don't see someone who suddenly voted for Biden last time suddenly being like, you know, he is old this time. I guess I'll vote for Trump. I think that's one of the real issues that Trump has. He has to find new voters. And I don't know where those new voters for. I know you didn't ask about DeSantis and I mentioned him before, but that's one of the reasons that I'm supporting him. It's not just because I support the policies. It's also because I see him as someone who can get new voters to change affiliation. Not only do I see it, I know it because I meet plenty of people like myself here in Florida who post COVID moved because they wanted to be in a place uh, that was freer, that had lower taxes, that was getting wokeism out of schools, et cetera. So former liberals are now voting as first time Floridian Republicans. The question for Trump and, and for his supporters is, who is the new person who is going to say, okay, I'm no longer a Democrat, 
I am now voting for Trump, who I most likely hated four years ago. I, I just don't know who that person is. Well, if those voters exist, let's call them mugshot Republicans, the ones who may well flip because of that. <laughs> Enjoy that free one. I give it to you as you gave us the new studio to me.